Welcome back to my channel, and in today's video, we're going to be watching one of my brother's games, and he's going to give us his insights on that. Okay, so this is one of my games, and we had the Sicilian, e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4. This is the open Sicilian. This is the diagonal. And this the point of g6 is you're gonna go bishop g7 and castle king side. And white plays f3 and white's gonna play bishop e3, queen d2, castles, and go g4 and have like a pawn storm. So white's trying to Start one of their plans. <clears throat> so we had bishop e3, castles, queen d2, knight c6, centralizing the knight. And now here is the critical moment. We've escaped the opening phase, and now we're in the middle game. So we have to make a plan for what we're going to play. So my plan was to go like f4. And g4. So the problem with playing f4 right now is that black can play this knight to g4. So each three. And like one of the important parts of a chess game is thinking what is ideas of thinking what your opponent might play. So that can help you. Yeah, so the, there's like a few ideas here. The first point is f4 and stop the knight from going to g4. And also, after f4, we can go g4 and have like these pawn storms. So we had bishop d7 developing this bishop. f4, kicking the centralized knight, knight to c6. And now we had f5 here. So it looks like black can take this pawn by going like this and here by decoy by trading off this knight which guarded this. But this position is good for white because they get g4 with tempo and they have the initiative here. So like a they few lives they, like, they have chances to attack. Yeah, they have the initiative. So I'm not going to give the best line here, but I'm just going to give a line. So like here, you could go like bishop g2, bishop c6. And there's like some play for, I'm just going to play some weird move like rook c8. And now, like we make a bunch of moves here. So we can, white's position is easier to play with like bishop h6. You can maybe bring the rook up in some lines and it's a lot easier to play. And you, so can, see how important, and you can see how important it is to look at all the lines. So all the possible lines. But they didn't take here. They improved their bishop on d7, which wasn't good because of this f pawn that was blocking it. And also, this, these pawns were all on this diagonal it wants to be. So it transfers to c6, putting some pressure here and improving this piece with future ideas, maybe like of a6, b5. So I defended while developing, and there's no tactics like like this because you could just take the queen is guarding this. So we had a6. We both continue with each of our plans, but here I'm here able to. About, off. And here it's about whose plan is 
is stronger and how fast they can do it. Yeah, so here I'm able to trade off this important defender of the king. It's really the only defender because this knight has been forced away from f6. And now here I try to throw my pawn at the king. Knight c5, each 5 Can you see that? Like whites really concentrated on that plan. They're not so so their their plan could work. So they're using all the moves to try to make that plan work. So here I played knight d five, but a better move was takes, and there's all sorts of mating nets here. So for example, if you take, I can just take this. And then, like, here's the line. So e5, and then rook h7, king g8. We go f6. The knight comes back to try to defend the king. We then this rook to the h file. The queen has to sack in order to look at this. So after in order to save that checkmate, try it for one move. And now the king has a left in f7, so if you check, it'll just move. Like, like a square to escape to. Yeah, so bishop c4, d5, we take in all the pieces are invading and we have this nice queen sack here that is just checkmate because we were threatening queen. This queen is like coming up here and there's rook h8 because this queen cuts off the seventh ring. And when the knight takes the g and h files are used by the rooks to deliver a checkmate. So we didn't have that here, so I just played knight d5, centralizing the knight. Now here, they played a bad move. This kind of helps me. This knight on c5 was a good piece, and this bishop, it was good, but it was blocking my queen from getting to this d4 with ideas of meeting like in various lines. So this helps me. So they trade off a bunch of pieces and you can see that Black's plan has gone nowhere. There's just a pawn on B4. None of the pieces are coordinated and these are well coordinated. This queen is blocking these two rooks from connecting. And like part of chess is how you can coordinate your moves. You can't just have like only one piece going. You need all your pieces. And this is part of the plan that White tried to play. So here, now I took, and there's like similar ideas. So that's why you can't go like here. We have mating nets here with this and we're gonna go rook h8 and queen h6 with checkmate so that's why this intermezzo here works this intermediate move so they took the check instead of immediately taking which is strong now here I was thinking about playing f6, which would have been the best move because if you take like this, we have queen to b7 check. And now say you go, your best option is to just sack your queen. But if you go here, we have this rook sack, rook h7. And now this rook, comes to the h file to seal off the king. 
So here I played queen to d4, king g8. And now I took the point of this is that this rook and queen are eyeing this h8 square. So I get my queen and rook are working nicely together. There's some other lines that are winning like this, and we can check, and we have this nice queen h3 move, and you have to sack your rook, and white is just winning. So here, I played rook h8. The only piece that's not in the game so far is this rook on d1. It's my worst piece right now. Besides from the king, which is the end game. Also, you need to know how, if you see any not so good pieces, how you can make those pieces better. So, let's see what happens next. So, I played rook f1. King has to go to e6 because that otherwise we take and win all the material. We take and then. Okay, so I'll show this line. It's it's not what they played because this is just lost. Because we could just take and take and check here. And now we can take, we're up to like 14 and white's gonna go on to win this game. So they played king e6. I didn't see any better option than to just Take the rook. So it's a rook versus a queen, but this queen is like nice and centralized, and this rook never really does anything. It just stays back here on the eighth ring. Like sometimes it's not about the points, but how that piece is helping, how much worth it's giving in the position. So here, I tried to like cut off these ideas. I could have, of course, just taken this pawn, but I just wanted to play it safe. And also I wanted to go for these queen h3 type of ideas. So we had queen h3, the king moved, lining up with the king, preparing for e5. So they played here. Okay, so. I'll show a different line. So say they went like king c7. Here I would have gone queen to d5, centralizing the queen. So I played d, they played d5. And now I played queen to g4, infiltrating, attacking this rook and preparing for queen e6 check. And now I want queen a6, looking at this pawn, which would win the rooks the say. You go um, somewhere to move, like this. We could just go queen a5. So, so you can see that in that position, they were attacking the king and the rook, so that's why they had to defend. So here, they want king d4, which is an inaccuracy because of this following com combination. Pause your videos if you want to find it. And then you can come back when you think you have an answer. So, so now what was the move you played? So here we had queen to b6, working the rook and the king. The rook went forward. And then I played this move c3, which decoys the king away from this the protection of this rook so i'll show the line so and you can here. see like it's this kind of like a, a king kind of like bring your 
the your opponents came closer to your side, so it's easier to checkmate. And if you play something like this, we have b3. The king is in a mating net here. And the rook is falling. So they took. And here, you might be wondering, well, can't they just go here? Well, we go king to c2, controlling this d3 square. And the king is in a mating net. Do you see any moves for the king? There no. is no. All the moves are unable to be played. So that's why the king is in a mating net. So if we have rook c8 allowing this king to have a left here. And now we have a4. And now the point is we're controlling this b5 square and we're preparing for queen d4 mate. So d4, we just take. So here they had to take. I took. So, so when they took, so when they took, then we well, got to take their rook. And now it's just winning because it's only a queen. Yeah, so I just gobbled up the pawns. And now here, this pawn is going to promote, and the king will be checkmated soon. So, so can you tell us what promoting is? So it's like, okay, uh -huh. so say the king goes here. We have here. So here, when a pawn reaches the eighth rank or first rank, it can for promote. White, it's the eighth rank, and for black, it's the first. Yeah, so when white gets to the eighth rank here, they can promote to a queen, knight, rook, or bishop. And I'll show like the final. And you usually promote to a queen because it's the highest value piece in there, but sometimes there's exceptions and that's called under promotion. Yeah. Okay, so let's go over this again. So we had this plan of this king attack. And this, is, this game is about like how you can continue your plan. Like if you think you have a plan, how are you going to continue with it and how you could win with that? Yeah, and this king, it never had any good defenders. Like there are no pieces protecting it. So it was and just- And didn't have many chances to create their own plan and like what's stopping them to make their own plan and so they had to defend all the threats that white tried to make so that was kind of the summary of what happened and it's really good to analyze the games and find out where you could improve and what are the lines you can find in the position? So, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video to others. And I'll see you on my next video. Bye. Bye.